We've already begun now to look into the New Testament to see how the New Testament builds on that Old Testament foundation so that that which is in embryonic form in the Old Testament is developed to the full revelation of who the Holy Spirit is in the New Testament. Let me remind you again that the purpose is that you would get to know the Holy Spirit. We've seen in the New Testament that the Holy Spirit is a person. Of course, He is the same person that is revealed in the Old Testament, but the New Testament reveals Him more clearly as the person He is. And the other major point that the New Testament brings out about the Holy Spirit is quite clearly, He is God. The Holy Spirit is fully divine. He is God. He is the third person of the Trinity. We have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is fully God. Now, passages like Matthew chapter 28 and verse 19 make this very clear. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So you can see there how the Holy Spirit is mentioned alongside the Father and Son. That is a clear Trinitarian passage. A very important passage on the divinity of the Spirit is Acts chapter 5, verses 3 to 4. Let's read it carefully. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. So Peter speaks to Ananias. You know what happened. The story was they were selling property, and they said, this is the full amount we received for the property, and they lied. And Peter says, you've lied to the Holy Spirit. Then at the end he says, you've not lied to men, but you've lied to God, showing clearly that the Holy Spirit is God. Then we have other passages like 1 Corinthians 12, verses 4 to 6, which speak about the gifts of the Spirit. It says... There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. Can you see there? We have the Father, the Son, and the Spirit mentioned together in their differing roles in the exercise of spiritual gifts. Another most famous verse is 2 Corinthians 13, verse 41. It's the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's say that together, everybody. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. That's the Christian grace. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.